What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at a new PC that recently popped up in my Amazon feed known as the Geekcom Mini IT8. It definitely resembles an Intel NUC and this is actually powered by an Intel CPU. As you can see, we've got a very small form factor here, USB 3.0 on the front, we've got some more USB 3.0s on the rear. It also has two USB Type-C ports, and you can get this with up to 16GB of RAM and a 512GB M.2 SSD. Inside of the box, you're obviously going to get the mini PC itself. We've also got a vase mount with all the hardware we need to get this mounted up. 6-foot HDMI cable, nice little felt carrying bag, and a 90-watt power supply. Taking a look at the I.O., up front here we've got a USB Type-C port, USB 3.0, and our 3.5mm audio jack. On each side, we've just got a little bit of ventilation. Over here on the right-hand side, we've got a Kinston lock. Over on the left-hand side, we've got a full-size SD card reader. And moving around back, we've got our power in, mini display port, gigabit ethernet, full-size HDMI, two more USB 3.0 ports, and another USB Type-C port. Taking a look at the specs for the CPU, we've got the Intel i5-8259U. Four cores, eight threads, we've got a base clock of two gigahertz and a turbo up to 3.8. Intel is on 12th gen now. This is definitely a little bit older, but we do get 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Unfortunately, it's running in single channel right out of the box. And speaking of that, this is using the Intel Iris 655 Plus. We've got a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD, AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and it's running Windows 11. Okay, so here it is. I've got all the drivers updated, and really it's a snappy little system, even with that single channel RAM. I was actually surprised at how well this little GPU is working. We'll take a look at some gaming and emulation in a second. Even though we're working with an 8th gen Intel chip, using this as an everyday desktop for email checking, web browsing, even 4K video playback would work out just fine. 16 gigs of RAM is more than enough. Really wish it was running in dual channel out of the box. You can always upgrade it because we do have two slots in here. But the way it's sitting right now, performance is much better than I thought it would be. Here we have a 4K 60fps video running from YouTube. I'm at a true 4K, I've turned scaling completely down in Windows 11. I've got stats for nerds up in the top left hand corner. We're not dropping too many frames at all. And most of this is from the initial load in. By the end of this video, I only had 9 drop frames, which really isn't that bad. It's something you would never notice while you're watching a movie in 4K. And going into this, I had a good feeling that it would handle 4K60 really well. So if you want to stream it or play it from your local drive or an external drive, this little chip will handle it. Checking out some web browsing, we'll just head over to Intel's website. We'll go with the new Arc GPUs. Really excited to get my hands on one of these for testing, but as you can see, everything loads right up. I am connected to my 5 gigahertz network and we've got a pretty fast connection and with this AC Wi-Fi, as long as you have a decent router and a good internet connection, you shouldn't have any trouble at all loading up your favorite web pages. I also ran a couple benchmarks on this mini PC and first up we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core score of 922 and a multi-core score of 3588. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, here we have 3D Mark Wildlife, this is a Vulcan benchmark, total score 5,029, and finally we've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with an 8,258. So it would have made a big difference with dual channel RAM, but I kind of wanted to test it just like it came out of the box, and now it's time to see how it handles gaming, then we'll move over to some emulation. And first up, we've got the original Skyrim, 900p low settings, it is running at 60. And since this does have Bluetooth built in, you can basically connect any controller. One that I've been using recently is the new King Kong Pro 2. It's really marketed as a Switch controller, but it does have D input and X input. It also works with Android. Really smooth controls, and as you can see, it does work with Windows quite well. Skyrim, 900p, low settings, we're running at 60. Even with that single channel RAM, this was really impressive to see what kind of games I could run on this little machine. Next up, we've got Minecraft. I definitely wanted to throw this in here. We're at 15 chunks, 1080p, and when it comes to Minecraft, you shouldn't have any issues on this chip. I mean, it's running really smooth here. Haven't seen any dips under 60. Everything looks really good.
And finally, we've got CSGO. I was really surprised to see that I got an average of 83 FPS out of this game. We're at 720p, medium settings, and I do think that we could do 1080p low settings, no problem at all, even with single channel RAM. But I gotta say, where this little chip shines is emulation. Now this isn't gonna do something like PS3. There actually might be a couple games that it will run, but I wouldn't buy this specifically for PS3. But when it comes to things like PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, it'll run it at five to seven X, really depends on what game you're playing. This one is a harder one to run. It's Midnight Club Dub Edition, and we're at seven X here. Checking out some PS2 emulation, here we have Gran Turismo 4 at 720p. I also tested Soul Calibur 3 at 720p, worked out great, but trying to take this up to 1080p, the way it's sitting right now, just isn't going to work out. This runs at about 55 FPS at 1080, and there's a chance with another stick of RAM in here, it would give us that performance boost we need to get 1080 out of PS2 games. And finally, we've got some Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator. DirectX 11 back in, 1080p, running great. Now I'm sure that there are a few games you might run into where you have to drop it down to 720p, and there's a few games where you could go up to 1440 with this, but it does work out quite well for GameCube and Wii. Whenever I'm testing these mini PCs, I always like to take a look at power consumption. So this is always plugged into a kilowatt meter, and at idle, this pulls around 12 watts. While gaming, it does jump up there to around 38. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 67 watts, which was way more than I thought it would be. But then again, we've got an 8th generation Intel CPU. So in the end, it's definitely not the most powerful mini PC that we've taken a look at on the channel, but it is a lot more powerful than the Gemini and the Jasper Lake Celeron CPUs. I know we're working with an older 8th gen Intel CPU, but it is going to put out a lot better performance than those mobile Celeron chips do. I would have loved to see at least one Thunderbolt 3 port on this, that way we could have connected an eGPU and made a pretty nice little gaming machine. I mean, this would have definitely done some really good 1080p high, maybe ultra settings with some AAA games if you had something like a 3060 paired with it, but unfortunately we only got USB Type-C. Another thing that would have been nice right out of the box is dual channel RAM. If this had two 8 gig sticks instead of a single 16, it definitely would have upped that GPU performance. But this isn't a gaming machine. It was never meant to be a gaming machine. And as a regular, everyday desktop, this can definitely work out really well. So if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a couple links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this machine, be it another operating system or more games or emulators, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, Thanks for watching.